the lost book of Inki, the seventh tablet. To the Adzu, away from the Eden, let them be expelled, so did Enlil the command decree. From the Eden to the Adzu, Adamu and Tiamat were expelled. In an enclosure among the trees, Inki them placed. To know each other, he left them. With joy did Inki see what Ningizida had done come to be. With child, Tiamat was frolicking. Ninma came to the birth-giving to watch. A son and a daughter, twins, to the earth beings were born. With wonderment did Ninma and Inki watch the newborns. How they grew and developed was a marvel. Days were as months, months to earth, years accumulated. By the time Adamu and Tiamat had other sons and daughters, the first ones were by themselves procreating. Before the Shar of Nibiru had passed, the earthlings were proliferating. With understanding were the primitive workers endowed, of commandments they were comprehending. To be with the Anunnaki they were eager, for food rations they toiled well. Of heat and dust they did not complain, of backbreaking they did not grumble. Of the hardships of work the Anunnaki of the Abzu were relieved. The vital gold to Nibiru was coming. Nibiru's atmosphere was slowly healing. Earth's mission, to the satisfaction of all, was proceeding. Among the Anunnaki, those who from heaven to earth came, there was also espousing and procreation. The sons of Enlil and Inki, from sisters and half-sisters, from healing heroines, took spouses. To them, on earth, sons and daughters were born, though, by the life cycles of Nibiru, they were endowed. By earth cycles were they quickened. Who on Nibiru, in diapers, would still be, on earth, became a child. Who on Nibiru began to crawl, when on earth born, was running around. Special joy there was, when to Nanar and Ningal twins were born. A daughter and a son they were, and then, and Utu, by Ningal, they were named. With them, a third generation of Anunnaki on earth was present. From the offspring of the leaders, tasks were allocated. Some olden chores were divided, easier among the offspring they were made. To the olden chores, new tasks were added. Upon the earth, the warmth was rising. Vegetation flourished. Wild creatures overran the land. The rains were heavier. Rivers were gushing, adobes repairing needed. Upon the earth the heat was increasing, the snow-white parts to water were melting. The bars of the sea of the ocean were not containing. From the depths of the earth volcanoes were fire and brimstone belching. The grounds were trembling, each time the earth was shaking. In the lower world, the snow-white hued place, the earth was grumbling. At the tip of the Abzu, Inki, a place for observing established. To his son, Nergal, and his spouse, Ereshigal, command thereof he entrusted. A thing unknown, an untowed thing, thereunder is brewing, Nergal to his father, Inki said. In Nibruki, the place of the bond heaven earth, and Lil, the heavenly circuits, was watching. By the means of the tablets of destinies, celestial motions he was comparing. There, in turmoil, in the heavens, Enlil to his brother Inki said. From the planet Lamu, the place of the way station, Marduk to Inki his father was complaining. Strong winds are disturbing. Annoying dust storms they are rising. So Marduk to his father, Inki words was beaming. In the hammered bracelet, turmoils are occurring. Upon the earth brimstone from the skies were falling. Pitless demons have it causing violently the earth they approached, and to flaming fires in the skies they were bursting, in a clear day darkness they were causing. The storms and evil winds they rage around, like stony missiles the earth they were attacking. Kingu, Earth's moon, and Lamu, too, by these havocs were afflicted. The faces of all three with countless scars were covered, and Lil and Inki to Anu, the king, urgent words were beaming. Nibiru's savants they alerted. The earth and the moon and Lamu, a calamity unknown, are facing. From Nibiru, the savants were responding. Their words, the leaders' hearts, were not calming. In the heavens, the family of the sun were talking stations, the celestials of whom earth, 
is in the seventh in a row where choosing places. In the heavens Nibiru was approaching, the sun's adobe it was nearing. In the seven in a row arranged was Nibiru distracted. The path through the hammered bracelet it was missing. From the bracelet bits and pieces it had been displaced. Bereft of the celestial bar, Lamu with Mamu near the sun were encroaching. In the heavens Lamu her glorious dwelling place was abandoning. Toward Nibiru, the heavenly king, she was attracted. A queen of heaven she wished to be. To quell her, Nibiru, from the celestial deep, a monstrous demon made appear. A monster once to Tiamat's host belonging, by the celestial battle fashioned. From the celestial deep made its way, by Nibiru was it from slumber awakened. From horizon to the midst of heaven, like flaming dragon, it was stretched. One league was its head. Fifty leagues in length it was awesome was its tail. By day the skies of earth it darkened, by night upon the face of the moon a spell of darkness it cast. To her brothers the celestial Lamu, for help was calling. With who the dragon obstruct, who will stop and kill it, she was asking. Only valiant Kingu, once Tiamat's protector, stepped forward to respond. To intercept the dragon in its path, Kingu was making haste. Fierce was the encounter. A tempest of gods upon Kingu was raised. By its foundations was Kingu shaken from the impact did the moon quake and shake. Then the heavenly havoc was calmed. Nibiru, to its distant adobe in the deep, was returning. Lamu, its dwelling place, did not abandon. The stony missiles upon earth and Lamu ceased their raining. Inki and Enlil, with Marduk and Nunruta, gathered a surveying of the havoc they undertook. The foundation of the earth Inki surveyed, of what its platform had befallen he examined. The depths of the ocean he measured, and earth's far corners the mountains of gold and copper he scanned. Of the vital gold there will be no shortage, thus Inki was saying. In the Eden, Nunruta was the surveyor, where mountains trembled and valleys shook, in his skyship he soared and journeyed. The landing platform was intact. In the valleys of the north, the earth's fiery liquid was pouring. So was Ninruta to his father in Lil Telling. Sulfuric mist and bit dumens he was discovering. On Lamu, the atmosphere was damaging. Dust storms were with life and working interfering. So Marduk to Inki was saying, To earth return, I wish, to his father he disclosed. In Lil, to his olden plans betook himself. What cities and their task he planned he reconsidered. A chariot place in the Eden must be established. To the others he was saying. The olden designs of layout on the crystal tablets to them he showed. The conveying of the landing place to the way station on Lanmu is no longer certain. To soar towards Nibiru from earth we must be able, so was Enlil to them saying. For the count since the first splashdown, the count of eighty shars it was. Now this is the account of the journey to the moon by Inki and Marduk, and how Inki and the three ways of heaven and the constellations determined. Let the place of the chariots near Bad Tiberia, the metal city, be established. Therefrom let the gold from earth to Nibiru in chariots directly be carried. So Ninruta of Bad Tiberia, the commander to them word was saying, and Lil to the words of Ninruta, his son, gave heed. Of his son's wisdom, he was proud. To Anu, the king, and Lil, the plan quickly conveyed to him words he was saying. Let a place of celestial chariots in the Eden be established. Near the place where the gold ores are smelted and refined, let it be built. Let the pure gold in the chariots directly from earth to Nibiru be carried. Directly to earth from Nibiru, let heroes and supplies be coming. Of great merit is the plan of my brother Inki to their father Anu was saying. A great disadvantage in its core it is holding. The net pole of earth is then Lamu's much greater. To overcome it our powers shall be exhausted. Before there is rush to deciding, let us an alternative examine. Nearby the earth a companion it has, the moon it is. Smaller is its net pole. Ascent and descent thereon little effort will acquire. Let us as a way station consider. Let me and Marduk thereto journey. 
the two plans anu the king before councillors and savants for considering presented let the moon be first examined the king they did advise let the moon be first examined anu to inki and enlil the decision being inki was greatly joyed the moon to him always was alluring whether somewhere waters it is hiding what atmosphere it possesses he did always wonder and sleepless nights its silvery cool disk with bewitchment he observed its waxing and waning a game with the sun played a wonder of wonders he deemed what secrets from the beginning it held he wished to uncover and a rocket ship did inky and marduk to the moon journey thrice they the earth's companion encircled the deep wound by the dragon cause they observed by many howls the handiwork of smashing demons was the moon's face marked in a place of rolling hills they set the rocket ship down in its midst they landed from the place the earth they could observe and the expanse of the heavens eagles helmets they had to don the atmosphere was for breathing insufficient with ease they walked about in this and that direction they went the evil dragon's handiwork was dryness and desolation unlike lamu it is for a way station it is unsuitable to his father marduk was saying let us abandon this place let us to earth return do not be hasty my son so was inky to marduk saying are you not by the celestial dance of earth and moon and sun enchanted unobstructed from here is the viewing the quarter of the sun is at hand the earth like a globe in the void by nothing is hanging with our instruments we can scan the distant heavens the handiwork of the creator of all in this solitude we can admire let us stay the circuits observe how the moon circles the earth how the earth its circuits around the sun is making so inky by the sights agitated to his son marduk was saying by his father's words marduk was persuaded and the rocket ship they made their dwelling for one circuit of earth for three circuits on the moon they remained in motion about the earth they measured the duration of a month they calculated for six circuits of earth for twelve circuits about the sun earth's year they measured how the two were entwined causing the luminaries to disappear they recorded then to the sun's quarter they attention gave the paths of mamu and lamu they studied with the earth and the moon lamu the sun's second quarter constituted six were the celestials of the lower waters so was inky to marduk explaining six were the celestials of the upper waters beyond the bar the hammered bracelet they were anshar and kishar anu and nudimud gaga and nibiru these were the six others twelve were they in all of twelve did the sun and the family make the count of the upheavals most recent marduk of his father was inquiring why have seven celestials in a row place taken so was he his father asking their circuits about the sun inky then considered their grand band around the sun their progenerator inky carefully observed the positions of the earth and moon thereon a chart inky marked out by the motions of nibiru of the sun not a descendant the width of the great band he outlined the way of anu the king to name it inky decided in the expanse of the deep heavens the stars did father and son observe by their proximities the groupings was inky's fascination by the circuit of the heavens from horizon to horizon he drew images of twelve constellations and the great band a way of anu one each of the sun's family of twelve he paired to each one he designated a station by names they were to be called then in the heavens below the way of anu whence nibiru the sun is approaching a band-like way he designed the way of inki he it designated to it twelve constellations by their shapes he also allotted the heavens above the way of anu the upper tier the way of enlil he called therein too the stars into twelve constellations he assembled thirty-six were the star constellations and the three ways were they located henceforth when nibiru nears and departs from earth by the stars stations its course shall be known 
so will the Earth's position designated as around the sun it travels, the start of the cycle of celestial time, the measure, Inki to Marduk indicated. When on Earth I had arrived, the station that was ending by me the station of the fishes was named. The one that followed after my name title, he of the waters, I called. So Inky, with satisfaction and pride to his son Marduk, was saying, Your wisdom, the heavens embraces, your teachings, my own understanding extended. But on earth and on Nibiru, knowledge and rulership are separated. So did Marduk to his father say, My son, my son, what is that you do not know? What is it that you are missing? To him Inky was saying, the secrets of the heavens, the secrets of the earth, with you I have shared. Alas, my father, Marduk was saying. There was agony in his voice. When the Anunnaki and the Abzu, the toil ceased, and the primitive worker you set the fashion, not my mother, but Ninma, the mother of Ninruta, to assist you was summoned. Not I, but Ningish Zita, of me, the younger, to help you was invited. With them, not with me, your knowledge of life and death did you share. My son, Inky to Marduk responded, to you command was given of the Ajiji, and Lamu to be supreme. Alas, my father, to him Marduk was saying, of supremacy my fate we are deprived. You, my father, are Anu's firstborn, yet in Lil not you is the legal heir. You, my father, were the first to splash down in Iridu to establish, yet Iridu is in Enlil's domain, yours is in the distant Abzu. I am your firstborn, by your legitimate spouse on Nibiru was I born. Yet the gold in the city of Ninruta is assembled therefrom to send or to withhold. The survival of Nibiru is in his hands, in my hands it is not. Now to earth we are returning. What will my task be? Am I to fame and kingship faded, or again to humiliated be? Inky embraced his son on the desolate moon to him a promise made. Of that of which I have been deprived, your future lot shall be. Your celestial time will come, a station mine adjoining yours shall be. Now this is the account of Sippar, the place of the chariots in the Eden, and how the primitive workers to the Eden were returned. Now many circuits of the earth, from the earth, were father and son absent. On earth no plans were implemented, on Lamu the Ajiji were in turmoil. In Lil to Anu, secret words conveyed. His concerns to Anu be from Nibiruki beamed. Inki and Marduk to the moon have gone. For countless circuits, they are staying. Their doings a mystery are. What they are scheming is not known. Marduk, the way station on Lamu, has abandoned. The Ajiji are agog. A dust storm has the way station been affected. What damage there is to us not known. The place of the chariots in the Eden must be established. Therefrom, the goal directly from earth to Nibiru to be carried. No way station on Lamu shall henceforth be needed. The plan of Ninruta, it is, great in these matters, is his understanding. Let him, the place of chariots, near Bad Tiberia establish. Let Ninruta be the first commander. Anu, to the words of Enlil, gave much consideration. To Enlil, a response he gave. Inki and Marduk to earth are returning. What about the moon they have found? Let us first to their words listen. From the moon, Inki and Marduk departed. To earth they did return. Of conditions thereon, they gave account. A way station is unfeasible now, so they reported. Let the place of the chariots be built, Antu was saying. Let Marduk be its commander, Inki was saying to Anu. The task is for Ninruta, set aside, Enlil with anger shouted. The Ajiji command is no more needed of the task Marduk's knowledge has. Of the gateway to heaven, let Marduk be in charge, so did Inki to his father say. Anu, the matter with concern, contemplated rivalries now the sons have affected. With wisdom was Anu endowed. With wisdom were his decisions. The palace of the chariots, for new ways, the gold to handle, is designated. Let us, what henceforth come in, the hands of a new generation place. Neither Enlil nor Inki, neither Ninruta nor Marduk in command shall be. Let the third generation responsibly undertake 
let Utu be the commander. Let the place of the celestial chariots be built. Let Sippar, bird city, be its name. This is the word of Anu. Unalterable was the word of the king. In the 81st Shar was the construction started. The plans of Enlil it followed. Nibiruki was in the center, a navel of the earth by Enlil it was designated. As on circles, by their places and distances, the olden cities were located. Like an arrow from the lower sea toward the mountain pointing, they were arrayed. A line on the twin peaks of Ararat, to the skies in the north reaching he drew. Where the pointing arrow, the Ararat line intersected. The place for Sippor, the earth's place of the chariots, he marked out. To it, the arrow directly led, from Nibiru Ki, was by an equal circle precisely located. Ingenious was the plan, by its precision all were made to wonder. In the 82nd Shar was the construction of Sippar completed. To the hero Utu of Enlil, the grandson, it command was given. An eagle's helmet for him was fashioned, with eagle's wings it was decorated. In the first chariot from Nibiru to Sippar, directly come anu was traveling to view for himself the installation he desired to marvel at what was attained he wanted for the occasion the ajiji by marduk commanded from lamu to earth came down from the landing place and from the abzu anunnaki were assembled there was backslapping and hailing a feast and a celebration for anu inan in lil's granddaughter singing and dancing presented with affection Anu kissed her, Anu Nitu, Anu's beloved, he fondly called her. Before departing Anu, the heroes and heroines assembled. A new era has begun, so was he to them saying. Supplied directly with the golden salvation, forthcoming is the end of toil. Once enough gold on Nibiru for protecting is piled in storage, the toil on earth can be diminished. Heroes and heroines to Nibiru will return. Thus did Anu, the king, to the assembled promise. A great hope to them he did extend. A few more shars of toil, and homeward they shall be bound. With much pomp did Anu to Nibiru soar back. Gold, pure gold, with him was carried. His new task Utu would cherish perform. Ninruta of bad Tiberia commanded retain. Marduk to Lamu did not return. With his father to the Abzu, he did not go. Over all the lands he wished to roam, in his skyship the earth to comprehend. Of the Ajiji, some on Lamu, some on earth, Utu was the commander made. After Anu to Nibiru returned, on earth the leaders great expectations had. With renewed vigor to labor, the Anunnaki they expected, gold quickly to amass, thereby quicker homebound to be. That, alas, was not what came to pass. In the Abzu, relief, not continued toil, was the Anunnaki's expectation. Now that the earthlings are proliferating, they them provide the labor. So were the Anunnaki in the Abzu saying. In the Eden, the tasks were greater. More adobes, more provisions were required. From primitive workers to the Abzu confined did the Eden heroes clamor. For forty shars was relief only to the Abzu provided. The heroes in the Eden shouted, Our toil has increased beyond endurance. Let us have the workers too. While in Lil and Inki the matters were debating, Ninruta the decision into his hands took. With fifty heroes an expectation to the Abzu he led. With weapons were they armed. In the forests and the steeps of the Abzu the earthlings they chased. With nets they them captured, male and female, to the Eden, they them brought to do all manner of chores in the orchards and in the cities they trained them by the doings was inky angered by them was in lil enraged my expelling of adamu and tiamat you have overturned so in lil to ninruta said let the mutiny once in the abzu occurred not in the eden be repeated so to in lil ninruta said with the earthlings in the eden the heroes are becalmed a few more shars, and it will no longer matter, so did Ninruta to Enlil say. Enlil was not appeased. With grumbling, let it so be, to his son he said. 
Let the gold pile up quickly. Let us all to Nibiru soon return. In the Eden, the Anunnaki, the earthlings, with admirations observe, intelligence they possess, of commands they had understanding. They took over all manners of chores. Unclothed, they were the task performing. Males with females among them were constantly mating. Quick were their proliferations. In one shar, sometimes four, sometimes more, there were generations. As the earthlings grew in numbers, workers the Anunnaki had. With food, the Anunnaki were not sated. In the cities and in the orchard, in the valleys and in the hills, the earthlings for food were constantly foraging. In those days, grains had not yet been brought forth. There was no you. A lamb had not yet been fashioned. About these matters, in Lil to Inki, angry words was saying, By your doing, confusion has created. By you, let salvation be devised. Now this is the account of how civilized man was brought about, how, by a secret of Inki, Adapa, and Titi, and the Eden were brought forth. By the proliferations of the earthlings, Inki was pleased. Inki was worried. The lot of the Anunnaki was greatly eased. Their discontent was diminishing. By the proliferation, the Anunnaki shunned toil. The workers as serfs were becoming. For seven shars, the Anunnaki's lot was greatly eased. Diminished was their discontent. By the proliferation of the earthlings, what by itself was growing for all insufficiencies was in three more shars of fish and fowl, there was a shortage. By what itself grows, Anunnaki, the earthlings, did not satate. In the heart, Inki, a new undertaking, was scheming to create a civilized mankind, and his heart he conceived. Grains that are sown by them to be cultivated, ewes that become sheep, let them shepherd. In his heart, Inki, a new undertaking, was scheming how this to attain he contemplated. The primitive worker in the Abzu, he for this scheme observed. The earthling in the Eden, in the cities, and in the orchards he considered. The offspring of the earthling he observed, an alarming matter he noticed. By their repetitive copulations, back toward their wild forbearings they were degrading. Inky in the marshlands looked about, on the rivers he sailed and observed. With him was only Ismud, his visor, who kept secrets. On the river's bank, bathing and frolicking earthlings he noticed. Two females among them were wild with beauty, firm were their breasts. Their sight, the phallus of Inky, caused to water, a burning desire he had. Shall I not kiss the young ones? Inky, his visor Ismud, was asking. I, the boat, will hither row. Kiss the young ones, Ismud to Inky, was saying. The boat, thereto, Ismud directed. From the boat to dry land, Inky stepped. A young one to him Inky called. A tree fruit she to him offered. Inky bent down. The young one he embraced. On her lips he kissed her. Sweet were her lips, firm with a ripeness were her breasts. Into her womb he poured his semen. In a mating he knew her. And to her womb she took the holy semen. By the semen of the Lord Inky she was impregnated. The second young one to him Inky called. Berries from the field she offered. The second young one to him Inky called. Berries from the field she him offered. Inky bent down. The young one he embraced. On her lips he kissed her. Sweet were her lips, firm with ripeness were her breasts. Into her womb he poured his semen. In a mating he knew her. Into her womb she took the holy semen. By the semen of the Lord Inky she was impregnated. With the young one stay, whether pregnancies come about, ascertain. So was Inky to his visor, Ismud saying. Ismud by the young one sat down. By the fourth count their bulges appeared. By the tenth count, the ninth having been completed, the first young one squatted and birth gave. By her a male child was born. The second young one squatted and birth gave. By her a female child was born. At dawn and dusk, which a day delimit, on the same day the two were born. The gracious one, dark and dusk thereafter, in legends they were known. In the ninety-third shar, the two, by Inky fathered, 
in the Eden were born. Word of the births Ismud to Inki quickly brought. By the births Inki was ecstatic. Whoever such a thing has ever known, between Anunnaki and Earthling, conception was attained. Civilized man I have brought into being. To his visor Ismud Inki instructions gave. A secret must my deed remain. Let the newborns by their mothers be suckled, thereafter into my household bring them. Among the bulrushes, in the reed baskets, have I found them. Thus to all you say, by the mothers, the newborns suckled and nurtured. To Inky's household in Eridu, thereafter Ismud brought them. Among the bulrushes, in reed baskets, have I found them, so did Ismud to all say. Ninki, to the foundlings, a liking took, as her own children she raised them. Adapa, the foundling, the boy she called. Titi, one with life, the girl she named. Unlike all other earthling children, the two some were. Slower to grow up than earthlings they were. Much quicker in understanding they were. With intelligence they were endowed, of speaking with words capable were they. With intelligence they were endowed, of speaking with words capable they were. Beautiful and pleasant was the girl, with her hands she was greatly dexterous. Ninki, the spouse of Inki, to Titi, took a liking. All manner of crafts she was her teaching. To Adapa, Inki himself teaching gave. How to keep records, he him instructing. The achievements with pride Inki to Ismud was showing. A civilized man I have brought forth, to Ismud he was saying. A new kind of earthling from my seed has been created in my image and after my likeness. From seed they food will grow, from ewes sheep they will shepherd. Anunnaki and earthlings henceforth shall be sedated. To his brother in Lil Inki word sent from Nibiru Ki to Iridu in Lil Kane. In the wilderness a new kind of earthling has come forth. To in Lil was Inki saying, Quick of learning they are. Knowledge and craft work to them can be taught. Let us from Nibiru seeds that are sown bring down. Let us from Nibiru use that sheep become to earth deliver. Let us the new breed of earthlings farming and shepherding teach. Let Anunnaki and earthlings together sedated be. So was Inki to Enlil saying, Akin to us Anunnaki in many ways, indeed they are, Enlil to his brothers said, a wonder of wonders it is. In the wilderness by themselves to have come about, Ismud was summoned. Among the bulrushes in reed baskets I found them, he said. And Lil the matter with graveness pondered, with amazement his head he shook. Indeed a wonder of wonders it is, a new breed of earthling on earth has emerged. A civilized man has the earth itself brought forth. Farming and shepherding, crafts and tool making can be taught. So was in Lil to Inki saying, Let us of the new breed to Anu word send. Of the new breed word to Anu on Nibiru was beam. Let seeds that can be sown, let ooze that sheep become, to earth be sent. So did Inki and in Lil to Anu the suggestion make. By civilized man let Anunnaki and earthlings become sedated. Anu, the words heard, by the words he was amazed, that by life essence, one kind to another leads, is not unheard of, to them words back he sent. That on earth a civilized man from the Adamu so quickly appeared, that is unheard of, for sowing and husbanding great numbers are needed. Perchance the beings to proliferate are unable? While the savants on Nibiru the matter contemplated, in Iridu occurrences of important took place, Adapa in a mating Titi knew, into her womb he poured his semen. There was conception, there was birth-giving, two twins, two boys, Titi gave birth. Word of the birth to Anu on Nibiru was beam. The twosome for conception are compatible, proliferation by them can occur. Let seeds that are sown, use that sheep become, to earth be delivered. Let on earth farming and sheep herding begin, let us all be sedated. So did Inki and Enlil to Anu on Nibiru say, Let Titi and Iridu remain, the newborns to suckle and nurture. Let Adapa, the earthlings, to Nibiru be brought. So did Anu his decision declare.